So, arms by the sides, by your sides. Feet hip width apart. Feet parallel. We ascertain hip width by just pushing the pelvis to one side, the greater transverse sticks out further, so that's the prominence on the femur bone. And then the parallel line is a, a line that runs between your second and third toe and out of the middle of your heels. The arms are by the side, we're not doing too much. We're noticing the doing that's already happening. The doing that's associated with being someone going somewhere. So breathe, notice your chest muscles and their connection to your breath. <sighs> Uncertainty, samshaya, is highly connected with being someone, going somewhere. Like, I'm supposed to be someone, not quite sure who it is. So we just kind of generally make a flap <laughs> around, and then we hope that will suffice for the being somebody. You know, if there's enough flapping, then there must be someone there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, notice that sort of tendency and, it, you know, it's really empty. And emptiness is our true identity, actually, which is kind of cool. And emptiness doesn't mean nothing. There's no such thing as nothing. Well, you certainly can't pro comprehend nothing anyway. If you try to comprehend nothing, you just comprehend, you know, whatever. Blackness, that's not nothing. You know, loneliness, that's not nothing. Whatever. I don't know what people comprehend. When they, but that's not it. Nothing is nothing in particular. It's everything. It's openness, it's the tight fist opening. Huh? So feel that in your chest, it gradually releases and the arms begin to release from their internal rotation and from their abduction. Hmm? From their adduction, sorry. So it's very tempting, very tempting to sort of pull them to be impatient but actually we're the uh, tortoise, not the hare. So whenever you get that drive to again become somebody, doing yoga, I must do something. Notice it, first of all. Notice how flappy it is, like loads of those Tibetan flags flapping. That's, they make a lovely noise, but they're, you know, they're just flapping flags. <clears throat> Now, as your arms release, which is a slow and deeply honest process, which takes patience and takes the ability to not be pulled by the tendency to flap, the tendency to grasp, the tendency to become, we can ride the wave of what's happening. The pectoralis is releasing, the arms are abducting, drawing away, they're externally rotating but not from action, but from release. Then action can ride on that release like a surfer riding on a wave. So you begin to follow it. In other words, let the arms drift further. Let the arms turn out huh? more, but it's riding a wave. You're not jumping the gun. The wave of release takes discipline. Huh? It can be frustrating and it can even be annoying. And that's just out of fear because we've been conditioned uh, to be somebody, you know, and, and we've been punished for not being somebody at times, you know. Can't be in the gang if you're not, um, you know, somebody. But you can be in our gang, nobody gang. <laughs> <laughs> so as the arms drift and you breathe. So emptiness, you know, is beautiful. It's openness. The arms will continue to drift. It's subtle, the temptation, we're all tempted, you know. That's in that, that Christian prayer, isn't it? Lead us not into temptation, all that. But we all get tempted to grasp. And we can continue to raise the arms up. So I like to try and find meaning uh, in all philosophies and all religions, or superimpose meaning on them even, where it might uh, or might not be there. So anything can be utilized. As the arms raise up, the tummy should tone up. I'm moving, uh, by the way, but I'm not saying you have to, but I I'm not thinking about it. As I've mentioned to you before, I've never 
no one's you know no yoga teachers ever told me oh Jim you know you should bend your knees and sway like that what I what I'm serving isn't memory it's not expectation instead it's this sensation of a wordless dance there you go it's best I've got wordless dance and it's beyond grasping it's beyond time we say uh, irrespective of time bring your arms through a big wide circle that back down any way that feels right don't overthink it we don't want the story uh, to block the reality and the hands can come to prayer I did overhear Thought for the Day. I recommend it today on Radio 4. If you haven't heard Thought for Today, you can listen again on BBC Sounds <laughs> because uh, it was by somebody who studies Buddhism, actually. And it was about not clinging to views and opinions. So it's kind of what we're saying here. Interlace your fingers, stretch your arms diagonally. People have mixed feelings about Thought for Today. I like it a lot. Some people hate it. Raise your arms up. But today's one I can recommend. If you don't like it, I'll reimburse you one pound seventy-five for the time takes uh, to listen to it. Uh, lightly tone your tummy, <laughs> and again, movement. So the tone of the tummy is to keep the front pelvis drawing up, and what that does is keep the back pelvis drawing down. And what that does is elongate muscles like the quadratus lumborum, which are muscles that extend from the crest of your ribs up to the uh, from the crest of the pelvis up to the beginning of the ribs on each side of the spine. And they feel great to stretch them out. Make sure your neck's not tight. Make sure you're breathing through your nose. Everything's coming together. <laughs> People say that when they're happy. I think they used to say that on the A team, didn't they? Oh no, I, I love it when a plan comes together. Well, there you go. It's a bit like that. Everything's coming together. <laughs> Big white circle. Good. Sorry about my uh, 80s references. Hands to the heart. Step generously apart good job breathing through the nose so check your toes equidistant from the front of the mat raise the arms without impinging on the roots of the neck you can feel your collarbones raise up the shoulder blades move out the chest raises the rib cage lifts they're all connected of course left toes in right foot and leg out turning on the ball of the foot finishing off the turn on the heel heel to arch alignment make sure the length of the stride is generous such as i've got here inhale exhale trikonasana that's the triangle posture empty of grasping aparigraha and full is empty of grasping must be full of something it's full of spontaneity breath comes and goes the yogin can drift one thing i find i'm not saying you should do it but i i tend to find my pelvis drifts forwards and backwards as a way of waking my feet up it's partly a way of waking my feet up but there's other things going on too so that could be something that happens to you I, for me the foot arches are really um connected with being awake generally the foot arches inhale come up hands on the hips feet face forwards deep breaths multiple deep breaths turn the back toes in front foot and leg out turning the ball of the foot finish off the turn on the heel breathing through your nose to your soft feel the collarbones raise as your arms raise feel the ribs raise Collarbones are connected to the breastbone. The breastbone's connected to the rib bones. Oh dear, it's that song. Inhale, <laughs> exhale, come down. Is some part of that song here the word of the Lord? Does that is that in that? Or am I making that up? No. Collarbone does it do the bread? It goes like that though, doesn't it? I thought it goes, hear the word of the Lord. It does, doesn't it? I'm not sure why it does that. Yeah, I don't know. Janet, we're all unsure here. At home, if you know, uh, please text in <laughs> if, if that song has hear the words of the Lord. Not that it's at all relevant to anything we're doing now. What is relevant is breath, here and now. Enjoyment, here and now. Surrender, here and now. It's like falling in love. It, it is falling in love. <laughs> Falling in love with a person, with a moment, with an album, 
I've recently fell in love with a, a, a new Prince album that's come out, a live album, of four albums, I'm in love with it. Not just because the vinyl is purple, which is quite exciting. <laughs> come on up. Feet face forwards, hands to the hips. Take deep breaths. Now we're gonna take Tree Konasana on the diagonal. You can take a block for this if you've got one. A cork block is quite useful, but you don't have to. I think there are some cork blocks distributed around the class. I'll do mine without a cork block uh, in case at home you don't have one. But if you've got one, they're kind of useful, but you, don't you can use it or not. The front foot, that is to say the right foot comes forward towards me if you're facing the screen or if you're in the room in real life. Uh, and the instep of your foot should be parallel to the front of your mat, right? So parallel. So one foot goes back away from me and the other one goes forwards towards me. And the instep of your foot, as I say, is parallel. Now that brings extra stretch between the front hips. You can feel, this is the inguinal ligament, which is a thickening of your abdominal tissues. Breathe through your nose and imagine and feel a softening that's a sort of meditative softening between the front hips. Again, it's like when we were re releasing the pectoralis, it's not something you do. The first thing we reach for when we're asked to, for something to happen in the body is self. We go, oh right, I'm supposed to do it. Don't, no, you're not. <laughs> It's the I that's in the way, in a sense. So it's more like, it's like surrendering to a kiss on your cheek from someone you like. <laughs> or, you know, there's thousands of examples of surrender. Stretch the arms. So feel that in between the front hips, there's nothing being pulled mechanically. It's being released through the breath, brain, body release. Inhale, exhale. It's trikonasana on the diagonal. In other words, confusing trikonasana. <laughs> because the body hasn't got a pattern for it. So it's all over the place in a good way. Let your breath out. That's it. Let it out again. <laughs> Keep letting it out. So, you know, like you're flowing. Because, you know, when we're not sure, we tend to do what rabbits do when they're not sure, which is freeze. And, you know, our diaphragms freeze. and. But that doesn't always serve rabbits very well. You know, the rabbit in the headlights thing. Sometimes rabbits should just hop along. You know? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Inhale, come on up. And while we're down, walk your feet from this rather discombobulated trikonasana to another discombobulated trikonasana. Not quite normal, nearly, but not quite. Look at Francis ahead of you and copy what she's doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's good though we want discombobulation that's what we want because what we are we tend to be in tracks and grooves and those make us kind of comfortably numb as roger waters once uh, sang well he didn't sing it he wrote it light tone in the tummy it was dave gilmore that sung it <laughs> inhale exhale hopefully you know, it's trackless. When something's trackless, the only way to deal with it is to be fully available. Like a wave is trackless. A wave, it can't be known before you get on it if you're a surfer. You know, you can't, you can't, you, you can base what you're doing on this wave based on the fact, on what your experience was on the last wave, but only in as much that the last wave you rode when you gave yourself up, you know? So you can remember that, it's like, oh, okay. It's something, it's like giving. So wave in Sanskrit is urmi. This present moment is a wave. Huh? To surf it, you have to give to it. You have to be like Bodhi from Point Break. If you haven't seen that film, it's Saturday, you could watch it later. Breathe easy, find the pelvic floor. Okay, calmly, excitedly, enjoying the discombobulation. Bring your feet back together. We're going to come into Rikshasana. So just give yourself a little kick out. Has anyone, anyone, anyone else seen Point Break? Yeah, 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 oh, yeah yes. So I'm not though. So good that film, isn't it? So good. Bring your feet together. One of the best chase scenes ever where they're running across the fences. So good. And then Bodhi just surrenders himself to a wave at the end. 
metaphor after metaphor. Raise your arms. <laughs> Lightly tone your tongue. Breathe easy. So you could just raise your arms and then slightly think about something else, or you could surrender to the goddess, which is a metaphor, <laughs> for the here and now. So on the goddess course that I'm on for the fourth year running, uh, we're on the goddess Kali. Tattoos are not, uh, you don't have to have them, but I do recommend them. <laughs> and the goddess Kali, you know, she has this form that people know about, can, you know, people quite like, people that are into rock quite like Kali, because she's like, Wah! but uh, actually her true form is no form, you know, her ultimate form. She's more represented as emptiness than something. Huh? So as you stretch, emptiness means I can't say what it means, you know, because it's not, it's empty of concepts. Okay, big circle, hands to heart, catch your breath, raise up your right heel and limber up any way you like. The purpose of limbering your leg is limber the adductor muscles, so just giving them a little stretch, but also you can use that moment when you're up on the uh, ball of the foot to wake up the arches of the other leg foot in any way that works sort of almost symbolic to me, waking up my foot arches is like waking up generally. They seem to be connected, you know, with a kind of coming online as it were. So be patient, be, you know, keep going as it were, and then raise up when ready, heel into thigh, thigh into heel, hands into prayer, jaw soft. So uh, skin to skin is ideal uh, for Rikshasana. Second best is sticky leggings. I don't know if that's a thing. The third best is a belt tied around the thigh of the standing leg and that pr provides adhesion. Breath flows. Release your hands, place your foot. That's a long stay, everyone in the class. Well done. I didn't check on you at home. How are you? I'll check on you this time. Oh, good. Oh, good. Thanks, Catherine. Second leg, take a breath or two, raise the heel. A little bit of um, Elvis in the morning, does no one any harm. And not only that, you can also wake up the foot arches. Again, if, if you find that useful, you know, not making any presumptions, but we're similar. And then when ready, heel into thigh, thigh into heel, vriksha. Nasal breathing is recommended where possible. It's like a uh, dance, it's like uh, tango, you know? It's sort of so one, the two dancing are actually like one. release <laughs> and place and catch your breath. I've only danced tango once for three minutes downstairs in the room down there. I was taken in a magical moment by Galit who just went, just don't worry about it. And then, whoo, I was off. It's the most amazing thing. She connected our navels together and we were off. Not physically connected them, that would be weird, but you know what I mean, energetically. Step your feet apart. 
So that was like an awakening, like tango is like riding a wave. You know, there's like no self, no other, just one. Hands on the hips, back toes in, front foot and leg out. Heel to arch. So if you've never tried tango or you've never met Galit, I suggest you do both. Bend your front knee, stretch into your back leg and repeat. Until you start to feel you're massaging various tissues intuitively. You should feel nice, you know. You should feel like you're relaxing. You should feel like you're allowed here to, to move in ways that feel right for you, like we're a team or a gang, you know, it's not like there's somebody dictating and other people following, it's more like we're practicing breathing together. The elbow eventually can come down, palm up, but there may be more movements. You can see I'm giving sort of examples of just moving my leg and moving my foot intuitively. You don't have to move, movement isn't inherently useful, but it, it certainly can be. Huh? Stretching the top arm up and possibly over. You can look up if you like. Here at the Brighton Buddhist Center, we do have a marvelous skylight. Although it's just whiteness up there today. So just deep breathing, honest breathing, expressive breathing. Good job, arm down, palm down, press into your leg, inhale, come on up. Hands to hips, let's have a few deep breaths. Let's take a few deep breaths. Let them happen and let them continue to happen as you turn for the second side. Back toes in, front foot and leg out, turning the ball of the foot, finish off the turn on the heel, should leave you with heel to arch alignment. And then check and then double check. Bend the front knee and then re-extend it several times. <coughs> really releasing. Well, we know we're hydrating through movement, the myofascia. We know we're melting some of the extraneous myofascia. We know we're bringing extra blood into the area, which brings warmth. All these things are helpful. And we know that we're also attuning. We're attuning. Hmm? <coughs> That in like focus, bringing things together, bringing tissues that were just in disagreement, encouraging them through this repetition. There's no force, it's just a constant invitation. Movement is a constant invitation. And then when ready, palm down, it doesn't mean that you, you know, need to end movements if they're still useful. Raising up, lightly tone the thumb, possibly up and over, but don't crush your head. We don't want this sort of scenario Good. Lightly toning the thumb, feel free to align. Align meaning find that which is not in agreement in the body, which is also has a correlate in the mind and in the breath and in our universe. The universe looks like a beautiful, harmonious place when body, brain, and breath are lined up. And when body, brain, and breath are not lined up, the universe looks like, oh dear. <laughs> not, not harmonious. Yeah. Arm down, palm down, come up on the inhalation. Well done. Turn the feet forwards. Now, uh, you will need a block or something to bring your hands to uh, for the next uh, pose. So I'm going to, excuse me a minute. Excuse me. I'm going to go and get one for myself. This is actually. Uh, known as the goddess posed by Sally Kempton, I think gave it this name. The marvelous Sally Kempton, who is, um, was, was a student of Swami uh, Lakshmanju. She'd written lots of nice books. We like Sally. So we're going to turn the toes out as far as we can. <laughs> Janet's excited. As far as you can without falling over. So that doesn't mean as far as you can and then fall over. It means as far as you can without falling over. Right. Now we want to track the knees, the thighs, all the tissues together in opposite directions, obviously, but they're in each leg, they go together. So for that, you might move, you might lift your feet. You know, I find that super helpful. I lift my feet. Let's have our hands in a little mudra. 
And, and remember, it's about alignment. It's not about doing the poses. The poses aren't anything magic. It, just doing a shape is all right. It's got something to it. But what makes it really magic is alignment. Okay, now we're going to... Oh, here we go. Here we go. Down to the block. Ay, ay, ay. Now, I like to lift my toes, but I guess I don't get out much. So see what you think. If you don't like it, that's okay. Or, you know, it doesn't mean it's not, it's not about whether we like it or not so much as whether it conduces to alignment or not. So for me, that does in a very helpful way. We never want to tolerate a pose or just let it be sort of stuck on us. Yes. Breath is everything. Unity is everything to a yogin. Disharmony. You know, we want to bring it to harmony. We don't want anyone left out, as it were, in the energy body. Okay. Come back. Use the block. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> and then turn the feet forwards. Hands on your hips. You can just pop the block a little bit further ahead of you. Good morning, adductors. The toes uh, turn in a little bit. And the little toes... Extend out. Now, for me, this is, a, this is a magical opportunity. You know, moving your feet. I could do it. I could do it for, like, you know, half an hour. I don't know how long. Because there's subtlety. It's dead boring if you're just raising your feet, stretching your toes, going, oh, what's next? You know, that's boring. But if you raise your feet and really take some awareness of equality, like meditative equality that corresponds to breath flow. It's not, you know, when there's doubt, then that's not it. So when there's doubt, the breath is shallow. Conversely, if your breath isn't shallow, there's no doubt. So we're, be we're balancing inner and outer ankle. So I'm pretty sure that if, if there's that much depth in it for me, there could be for you too. <laughs> so stretching the toes, balancing between inner and outer ankle repeatedly. In Patanjali says, Tatra which is like the practice is returning to stillness again and again. What is stillness? It's agreement, huh? where everything agrees. Lift from the inner groins up on an inhalation, exhale forwards and down to your block. The anterior spine is open. The breath is deep, the jaw is soft, the anterior spine is open. Make sure your toes turn slightly in, not slightly out. So just check. And then once you turn them slightly in, reiterate the alignment because nearly everyone has very shy little toes. Right? So the little toe needs to be stretched with all the other toes. Again and again. Never give up. I've not given up on this. <laughs> and um, I just updated my Instagram today. <laughs> my uh, profile. And I realized it, it, this year marks my 32nd practice year of uh, asana anyway. I was dabbling around with chakras and things like that before. But asana, there's two. Yes, and, and you know, I've done, done a lot of this toe stretching malarkey. <laughs> and here I am still doing it, not because, you know, I've got persistence, because it isn't finished. And the cool thing is, it will never be finished. That's the cool thing. Now, if your lower back dips, right, like concaves, that's great, that's as it should be. That means your hamstrings are releasing. If it's not, that's great too. You stay until it does. It might be a minute, it might be a month, it might be, you know, whatever. The point is, if it does dip and keeps dipping, it sometimes feels like a relief to go a bit lower. It's, you know, so going lower is based on whether it's like a relief, <laughs> not whether it's driven somehow, you know. It's a bit slick, slicky, isn't it? I'll tell you what. Yeah, probably better on the floor like that. But also, I've got that liquid chalk for other purposes. It's good, actually. 
He's good. But I slip on those mats. That's why I've got that chalk. So if you go lower, you know, we go wherever. The point is getting lower to the floor isn't better. Everyone knows that in general conversation, lower doesn't mean better. Could do, could mean worse. <laughs> it's just lower, it's a sort of neutral term, depends on context. Right, okay, frustrating, isn't it? Oh, you might as well just go, you might as well just go down. <laughs> We do have another better mat somewhere. Okay, come on, come on up. Sorry about that. Come on up. Take a breath or two and kick the legs out a little bit. We're slipping a bit on these mats. So if you are slipping on the mats here at the BBC, that's the Brighton Buddhist Centre, not the British Broadcasting Corporation, and then we do have liquid chalk. Other versions are available. You put it everywhere. Legs, no, don't put it in. Feet, yeah, hands. It's just climbers chalk. It does help to stop you sticking and it leaves your mark afterwards, which I like. Okay, walk your feet together and just kick out a little bit. So if you want any liquid chalk, please use it. That's why I bought it for you because I know the mats at the Buddhist Center are a bit rubbish. Just, I won't give you the full history of how they came here and the various debates. Anyway, now <laughs> we're going to clasp one hand with the other, but you might need a belt. If you haven't got a belt, I'll bring you a belt. Mm -hmm. I, well, I say I'll bring you a belt, not a home. Can't bring, uh, you know, it would take me quite a while to get round to your place. Anyone need a belt who's not quite, you're, you're just about there, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll give you that in case. It might be stiffer on the other side. That's it. Good, good. Great. This is great at bringing down the shoulder. And that depression of the shoulder, of the uh, bones, stretches the muscles that extend up from there. <laughs> so I've described before, you could see yoga as two shores of a stream, a fast flowing stream or river, the near shore, the far shore. The near shore represents our ordinary everyday perception of you and me and here and there, good and bad, success and failure, right and wrong, can and can't, us and them, right? The normal world, we can call it conventional reality. Perfectly useful for functioning, getting around the place. And then, the far shore is where everything's interdependent, you know, so, and I, I think we all, we all touch that far shore when we forget to run our programs. So we use modern postural yoga or any other experience like a sort of challenge. Experiences challenge our patterns, our habits. So in this case, it's a stretch, or it could be a conversation with someone, you know, some challenge, yeah? or you're shy or something. The second step, the second stepping stone is giving to the stretch. Otherwise, you've just taken one stepping stone, you're standing on a stepping stone in the middle of a fast flowing river, that's no good to you. If you take the ste second stepping stone, giving to the stretch, the third step is over to the far shore, that happens naturally. Okay, slow and easy release. Take a breath. Or two. If or when ready, raise the other arm up. You might need a belt on this side where you didn't on the other. And bring the arms in the same position. Good job. It's really common, normal, in fact, to find one side uh, stiffer than the other. It's normal. <laughs> and then breathe easy. So breathing easy means, well, just like what it sounds like. You kind of relax, it's the Buddhist center. I quite like Saturday morning at the Buddhist center because no one else is in here, it's just us. Got the whole, it's like having the house to yourself, you know. People go out, you've got the house to yourself, it's quite nice. Yeah. 
having the house to yourself, taking the dog for a walk on your own, going and getting in a bath with the locking the door, they all equal the same thing. Not having to be anybody, huh? When that happens, something kicks in. So not having to be anybody is giving to this moment. What is it you give? Resistance. What is the resistance? Habits that we identify as self, but are not self. <laughs> They're just programs, habits, conditioning. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, slow, low, slow release when you're ready. Now we're going to either hold the elbows or bring the hands into Paschima, which means behind you, Namaskara. So Paschima Namaskara, I, I like a bit of a swing up, and then I like repetition for my hand movements so that I'm actually teasing out the tissues of the upper back. But actually many people will find they get the same thing but more accessible by holding the elbows. So that's fine. So I could keep going with this repetition, this sort of repeated movements. We talk about a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. We can talk about the Buddhist uh, analogy of the jug fills drip by drip. So in other words, lots of little steps hmm. get you somewhere. Some things seem impossible, like learning an instrument or learning another language, but you just have to have faith, you know, <laughs> repetition. Step your feet apart. Generously, good job. Breathe through your nose. At home, you can turn in either direction, but here in the Brighton Buddhist Center, we're going to turn that way. So back toes in, front foot and leg out, whole body turns. Walk your front foot a little further across the width of the mat. Lift the back heel externally, rotate it. So you square up. You square up. How's that chalk working? Great, good. Game changer, isn't it? Lift up from the inner groin of your back leg on an inhalation. Inhale. On the exhalation, extend from the inner groin of your back leg. So it takes focus, but relaxed attention. <laughs> relaxed attention. Patanjali uh, recommends, in reference to seated meditation postures, stira sukhamasanam, uh, attention, or that sort of spacious and focused. Stira means stable. Mm. Sukha means easy. Mm. So it wants to be stable, but it wants to be easy. Release the gluteus maximus on the back leg, or at least the fibers that externally rotate. So don't squeeze the buttocks on the back leg. Come up slow and easy hinging from the hip joints. Don't release the arms. Turn back to the front, level the feet. Take a few breaths into any resistance. We're not trying to uh, override resistance. That's not what we're doing here. Uh, we, we've got no enemies, you know, we practice Maitri, friendliness. So if there's resistance, we, we want to know what, you know, what's up, you know, how can we help? If there's a tightness, go to it, say, what do you need? Rather than, you know, shut up and put up, that's not what we, we don't speak to our bodies with that kind of uh, attitude, we speak with kindness. Back toes in, front foot and leg out, whole body turns. Again, walk your front foot further across the width of the mat. Again, lift the back heel, externally rotate it, and then land it. Breathing through the nose, light tone in the tum. So we know that light tone in the tummy helps to keep the lower back muscles long. Focus on the inner groin. So this is the psoas and iliacus muscles. Lift up from the inner groin on an inhale. Go ahead. On the exhale, extend from the inner groin forwards. Sometimes it can feel like your back leg is releasing, right? Like, it, like you're standing in a strong, fast flowing river. 
and your back legs just sort of pulled back without you doing anything. It's just kind of, there's a constant current going that way. And it correlates to the body going forwards. Back, leg, back, body goes forward. Breath doesn't hold on at all. It's expressive. Breathe into the chest muscles. Let go of the toes on the back foot. <laughs> they grip a little bit. That, that gripping is the self, isn't it? I, the dancer surrenders herself to the music. And in that surrender, she re-arises in her true form. Tada drashtu swarupe avastanam. Inhale, come up, hinging, still surrendered. And then turn back to the front. <laughs> You're probably dying to release the arms. So do it slow, real slow. <sighs> and then it's quite like, Oh, uh, Jim, <laughs> take a breath, just kick out, stay lively. Uh, so kick out, stay lively. We're going to come into Uttanasana. So um, for the benefit of, well, everyone really, I'll do it sideways on. You could do that too as well. So you're facing into the midline of the room if you're here in the studio. Uh, block, a block's worth taking. You put it in front of you like that. Check your feet a hip width, a generous hip width. All right, don't be stingy. Never good to be stingy in any uh, time of your life but specifically not in yoga. So have a look at your feet. Have a look. Make sure that they're level. Okay? Make sure that they're level. Imagine a line running through the gap between the second and third toe and out the middle of the heels. Toes aren't turning out. They're not turning in. Right? So your feet are sort of triangular-ish. They're wider at the front than they are at the back, unless you used to wear those pointy-pointy shoes for years and years. But otherwise, they should be wider at the front. And of course, they get wider when you practice yoga. So you have to end up with more and more um, daggy footwear as time goes by. But that's just what, you know, small price to pay. Now, lift up from the inner groins. Go ahead, let's do it, and then inhale together. Inhale, inner groins up. Exhale, fold over the top of your front thighs, hinge from your hip joints, and come down to your brick. So, the brick is as it is, it's the height it is, and that looks good. Here we want to keep the chest parallel to the floor at first. So stay up quite high. You can play with the brick, using the brick, by doing things like raising the heels, moving the pelvis, to massage and ease out the back. We want to really viscerally get in touch with more and more openness that runs along the whole length of the spinal column. Now the spinal column at the bottom end starts with the tailbone, right? It's really beautiful to feel into your tailbone. Right? But it's not something you can just switch on. You have to tune in or feel in. And movement often helps us to find the tailbone. It's three to five bones. And of course, it was once a tail, so there is sensitivity there. There is neural connection to the tail. And there's an emotional connection too. Like with dogs, you know, when dogs are sort of, you know, when they're sort of ashamed or upset or confused, what do they do? They bring their tail between their legs, don't they? Poor little things. <laughs> like if they've chewed up your credit cards or something and you're like, oh, Stanley, that's just a made up name for a dog. Oh, Stanley, what have you done? <laughs> and Stanley to put his tail between his legs. So that's emotional response, isn't it? And when they play, but when you come in, that tail's you know up and wagging. <laughs> so feel the emotional connection to your tail. It's there, and let it go. Go beyond the concept of human beings as something separate to animals. Now, over time, for some. What's going to happen is the hamstrings are going to be releasing through a mixture of melting the myofascia, through time, through movement and hydration, again, through movement, 
but also you can begin to tune in the front thigh tissue in such a way that it tells the back thigh tissue to release. So it's this kind of intelligent tone. If your lower back dips, great. If it keeps dipping, you're only gonna feel comfortable if you lower your block. So that's fine, you know, go ahead. Truth is for most people that isn't the case, you know, but if it is, that, that has to be an option. If you keep moving intelligently, then the, the fascial tissues will keep melting and hydrating. And it's possible in some sort of, uh, you know, it's some time frame that some people will even not use the block for their hands because of comfort, not because of some sort of trying to keep up with the Joneses or something, but just because of comfort. In that case, and it could also be that you just got really short legs, a really long torso, a really long neck, and a sort of pointy, pointy long head, then in that case, you might even, some people might even put their heads on the blocks, right? It's not an ambition uh, in just, just giving options, that's all. So we're up on the block, or we've lowered the block, or you know, the head's on the block, or... Yeah, but it's about being honest, isn't it? Because we're here to, to truly benefit. Yes is the word. To this living moment. Okay, now, if your hands are on a block, we're going to all bring our hands down. So that means bending the knees for most, but not necessarily for everyone, but for most. And then we're going to walk the hands forwards and the feet backwards. And remember, if you're in studio and you're slipping on your mat, use the liquid chalk and feel free to use it more. You know, use it as much as you like. That's, I, you know, I want it to be used. So uh, if you want it, you come and get it, or you can ask me to get it for you if you're slipping on your mat. Uh, armpits open, the inner armpit, the outer armpit, the under armpit. The inner armpit is where the armpit and chest sort of merge. You could call it the outer chest, you could call it the inner armpit. And to extend the inner armpit, it's not, you know, it's like, a, it's, it's intimate. You know, it's not something you can just switch on like a light switch. It's more something you tune into like a radio dial. And the outer armpit and the under armpit is just when you divide the armpit into top and bottom and the under armpit goes towards the legs. Other instructions like lift the inner groins, deepen the gluteal creases could be investigated if you want. Okay, well done gang, come down slow and easy to a regular kneeling position known as Vajrasana. And you can put and should put in many cases a block uh, between the heels and buttocks if the knees are tight. One hand resting on top of the other, breathing through the nose, jaw soft. So just going with the breath. Maybe there's some rolling. Sometimes rolling is helpful. Like rolling on the shins. You know it's helpful if it opens your breathing up. That's how you know. Interlace your fingers, stretch your arms diagonally. Thumbs resting on your legs for a moment. Raise the arms up. Couldn't it just be in halfway, three quarters of the way? We know that the body, brain, and breath are one. So as you raise up further, make sure no impingement happens in the neck. Or, so you can move any way. And you're just serving this sense of flow rather than a sort of particular look or just serving this sense of flow. 
So, you know, movement can help for some. Breath is everything. Good job, big circle to release. One hand on top of the other on your legs, breathing deep, breathing honest, breathing natural. Actually. So just letting a few of those deep breaths come and go. Now releasing your hands when you're ready to. We're going to uh, jump up on, on a little perch. Quite exciting, like a little bird. Now I'm gonna do it jumping up onto it like a little bird, but you don't have to. That's just my own sort of silly nature, you know? So you can climb up onto it regularly. If you haven't got a block, you can use uh, a book or a piece of wood that doesn't have splinters in it and that kind of thing. Something firm, something even, right? And that's it, there's a little squat like a little bird on a perch. It's quite cute. And you just breathe into that. Now, there's options. The next option I think is great for the back and that's to bring your arms through the inside of your legs. You got it. Through the inside of your legs. And then, I'm just rolling up my sleeves because I mean business, to press your triceps up and against your shins. There's one, there's two, like that. Now that's, a, you know, already super beneficial just to be like that. Great for the tailbone. We mentioned the tailbone already. Gripping around the tailbone is gripping around stories, stories to do with health, stories to do with age, stories to do with gender, stories, <laughs> stories to do with job, or, you know, help <laughs> stuck in stories so <laughs> how do you get out of the stories well the stories have a correlate on the level of the body so you breathe you let go of the body you trust you, to let go you, isn't difficult you just got to understand that it's better than holding on you, you know exponentially for some people the interest in being perched like a bird takes them to further interest in wondering whether or not they might perhaps have the ability to fly. So for those people, they can't help themselves but lean forwards a bit. So you might be one of those. And then obviously, because you've got lovely faces, all of you, lovely cheekbones and stuff, lovely zygomatic arches, as you go forwards, you won't want to smash your face into the floor. So you have to counter push back with your hands. And that lift you up so you might end up with your heels quite high that might lead you to a curiosity to see could a foot lift off the floor maybe both it's just a curiosity thing this is called bakasana <laughs> and then you come back down ay 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 oh well done. Back to hands and knees. Yeah. Good, happy faces. Well, I'm going to describe them as happy. <laughs> Good. So on your hands and knees, let's put my glasses on so I can see how happy you are at home. Lord, you look incredibly happy. I've never... <laughs> good show. <laughs> Surely good show. Take a few breaths. Just wag your tail. Wag your tail. Wag, wag, wag. Like a happy dog. Sorry to always mention dogs. I was born in the year of the dog, but I know some of you are rabbits. So you might wag your tail like a fluffy bunny tail or pigs or tigers or dragons or snakes or horses or oxes. I don't want to miss anyone out. Tigers. Rats. Rats. <laughs> <laughs> Darn, I knew I was going to miss one of them out. What do I? Roosters. Is that you? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you just want to, you just want to say, stand up for the roosters. Good. <laughs> Good, deep breath. Who have I missed? People at home going, you miss me. Sorry. Anyway, one foot forwards into the place of the, uh, its own hand. The other knee lifts up and stretches back. How many rabbits are in the room? I know we've got at least two. I know you're a rabbit. I know you're a rabbit. Any other rabbits? Any tigers? Hi. Any dogs? Hi. Oh, hey, welcome. Me too. 
anything else. <laughs> What's the other one? Dragon. Any dragons? You're a dragon. Nice to see. Dragons, 1976. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> oh, people waving at home as well. Yeah, me too. I'm dragon. Knee down. Hands on the thigh. Light tone in the tummy. So it's a bit like a sort of knight of old, but I shouldn't mention that now. I know there are dragons because probably dragons hate knights. <laughs> what was a whole St. George Malarkey? Lightly tone the tummy, <laughs> release the inner groin by saying yes, mentally, respiratorily, physically. Raise your arms if you like, optional. If you feel pressure on the back knee, release the inner groin in an upwards release of the back leg. If you feel pressure on the back knee, release the inner groin. <laughs> okay. Super duper, as we say in yoga. Come down, make your hands and knees, catch your breath. Have a little wag of your tail. Wag, wag, wag. The tail, the uh, dragon's really long, scaly tail with a point at the end. <laughs> the... <laughs> The rooster's feathery, fluffy tail. What are you? What are you? The ram. No, that's that. What like? But is that Chinese? Is that Chinese ram? It's a sheep or a ram. Is that? He once had a cup with a sheep on. Yeah. Okay, so you must be. You must be the year of the sheep. I didn't. I don't know. Have I heard of that one? Yeah. Well, I believe you. Yeah, I believe you. Let's bring the foot forward. I've got to look at that one up now. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mention it before. Breathe easy, jaw soft. Anyone else, a sheep or a ram? Chinese? 1971. 1971. Mm, don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. Bring back knee back and land it several times. Jaw soft. 1970s. Oh, oh 1971 is a pig. Is yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Made someone's day today. Okay, come up. <laughs> Lightly so in the tummy. Pigs are very friendly. Apparently, they're very friendly. A bit lazy, though. Are you a bit lazy? A bit what, what? Someone's had a transplant. That's true. They've had it transplanted in. They're probably all lovely and nice now. Raise the arms up. Lightly toe in the tummy. Breathe easy. <laughs> hey, did anyone watch that movie over Christmas? Last Christmas with the music from George Michael. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that was kind of, I wasn't expecting it to be good. It was kind of good. Oh, it's really good, isn't it? That thing at the heart. I don't, I'm not going to tell you, but watch that movie, even though it's not Christmas. It's got a thing about a heart there. Really? I liked I thought it was lovely. I mean, there's a lot of George Michael songs, but that's what it was. Yeah, it's all right. I like George Michael now as well. Lightly turn the tummy. <laughs> Breathe easy. <laughs> I wonder what his Chinese sign was. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess. Okay, come down. I'm gonna say George Michael was a tiger. I'm just guessing. <laughs> Count your hands and knees, wag your tail, breathe, do yourself. Well done, everyone. Okay, we're gonna come into Ekapada Rajakapotasana. So that means bringing one knee forward to the back of its own wrist, there it stays. Bring the foot diagonally across, stretch back your other leg. Take your time. Yes. Then, if your knee, listen, if your knee is uncomfortable, you should lean across it. Right, if it's uncomfortable and they lean towards it. That's simply because if you lean over your leg, then there's more downwards pressure and you can't press into the floor. So the floor presses back and it causes a sort of fulcruming that impinges on the uh, medial, um, what's it called? I've gone mad. Uh, meniscus. <laughs> okay, so you can either come forwards. A lot of people find it uncomfortable to come forwards to their forearms. So feel free to do that. Great. Or some people prefer to come up. And of course, some people get FOMO. So they want to do both. That's fine too. No pain in the knee. There should be no sustained pain in the knee. Breathing easy. Mm. 
Okay, coming down if you're up or up if you're down, tucking your back, toes under, your knee forwards, back to hands and knees. Take a few deep breaths. What's your favorite George Michael song, Francis? Or one of them? I like that one that goes, I don't know what it's called, teacher, there are things I still have to learn. You know that one? Yeah, yeah I like that one. Other knee forwards, blah, 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 blah. blah. Cowboys and angels. What's that, Catherine? Cowboys and angels. I can't hear you, because you're muted. Oh, sorry. Doesn't matter, are you saying? No, it doesn't matter, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're probably shouting a George Michael song, I imagine. You are, okay, I'll ask you at the end. <laughs> so playing with the posture, either coming down or going up. Remember if your knee's uncomfortable, lean across towards it. Light tone in the tum. Saying yes with the breath. What was that going on? I, 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 oh, oh, go on. No. <laughs> I know the title, I can't bring it to mind, but I'll look it up in a bit. Jaw soft, eyes soft. Okay, if you're down, come up a little to come out. If you're up, come down a little to come out. Tuck the back toes in and come into Adumukashwanasana one last time. This is a downward facing dog. Pad your paws into the deep weave with the mat. Keep the jaw passive. Inner armpits, outer armpits, under armpits, inner groins open, gluteal creases deep. Energy runs up the thighs and back at the top of the front thighs. Once there's that stability from the top of the thighs, the yogin might find she or he or they can extend the deep belly. Yeah? Well done all. Come down slow, calm, and easy to a comfortable seated position. Now I'm gonna go for Siddhasana. I'm so, uh, you know, but Siddhasana is not comfortable for everyone. It's comfortable um, for some. So you can choose any uh, comfortable seated position. Sukhasana, uh, whatever you need. <sighs> And then the chest is lifted. Did you nearly fall off your block, Norma? <laughs> oh no, your toe wasn't coming with you. <laughs> chest up and light and buoyant. Yes, light and buoyant. Let's go through those two words and experience them. Light and buoyant. Light and buoyant. So one way to think of the word light, I find is useful, is to think of a dandelion seed. And a dandelion seed is light. And what, what's cool about the dandelion seed is it's super responsive, isn't it? It's sensitive, it's available. So that availability, that emptiness, shunyata, which is first pointed to in the Pali Canon by the Buddha, we could argue it might be pointed to earlier by uh, 
in the Upanishads by uh, Runchi, but really emphasized by the great teacher Nagarjuna. Emptiness teachings. So what is emptiness? Nothing other than lightness. What is lightness? Nothing other than openness. What is openness? Nothing other than generosity. What is generosity? Nothing other than love. What is love? Nothing other than blissful surrender and the spontaneous dance that arises out of that. Feel the vacuity of the center channel, central channel, by imagining as you breathe in that the movement comes from a, just above the crown of the head down to the heart and then back up the other way. So we're just defining the central channel in this upper aspect by following the in-breaths, draw down to the heart, the out-breaths, draw back up to the Dwadash Anta. Dwadash Anta is the space of 12 finger widths above the crown of the head. And in this way, we're just kind of defining, feeling out, sweeping out, cleaning out the central channel just by following the breath up and down. As it comes in, it goes down to the heart and then back up. Let the in-breaths draw further to the Nabha Chakra, the navel center. Still from that high point above the crown of the head and back up. Still correlating to the in-breaths and the out-breaths. Still imagining you're drawing that breath through a central channel of vacuity. Then drawing it a little further down to what's called the kunda, three finger widths below the navel. Kunda meaning bulb, like a daffodil bulb. Goes all the way back up to the Tvada Shanta on the exhale. And then down to the pelvic floor. So all you're doing is visualizing the breath. Down. Up. Just with the natural breath. Down as you breathe in. Up as you breathe out. Okay. Totally natural. Next time you breathe in, leave a marker at the pelvic floor, like just like an energetic marker. And then as you breathe out, leave a marker at the Dwada Shanta, so you're aware of the two points then at the same time, connected. And then normal breathing, just aware of the two points connected as you breathe. An ideal world would stay. This is the meditation to stay in the center, which we can do even now as we open our eyes and we proceed to lay down on our backs for 
the corpse pose, Shavasana, just for a couple of minutes, um, slightly, slightly tardy, a couple of minutes late, but hopefully you've got a couple of minutes that you can lay in corpse pose form. Nice socks. Make sure you're warm, put on a blanket. Do you want a blanket, Francis? Yes, that's a yes. So having the arms a generous distance apart allows space for the chest. And if you scoot the shoulder blades under, that leaves the chest buoyant, sort of floating, you could say. A sense of giving uh, in the present. So if you, you know, we often feel if we, we want power, we want recognition, we want ability, we want knowledge. And we therefore presume that we've got to get those things. We've got to get, we've got to grab, we've got to grip. But ask a musician, ask a dancer, ask a runner, ask a really good chef. Ask a poet. Ask a swimmer. What is that moment where everything's moving, feel like? It's not grasping. It's surrender. It's not taking, it's giving. It's service, savor. And from service comes power in three clear forms that are interconnected. The power to know things are like this, which births the power to act. Action is birthed from vision. You act on the basis of what you see. If you see things as they are, you act appropriately. And the third power is the power to want to act appropriately. It arises called icha or desire. An artist has great desire to get back to her canvas. A musician has great desire to get back to that moment where things flow beyond themselves, that blessed moment beyond self. The runner wants to get into that zone beyond self.
wiggling the toes and the fingers a little. We feel into the body. We might take stretches, intuitive stretches. And then the legs can be bent. The soles of the feet can come to the floor. And one can scoot the buttocks under. A lovely feeling actually, scooting the buttocks under. Because then you can really release, totally release the lower back into the breath. I recommend taking a deep breath, totally releasing the lower back. And then roll onto your side if you're here. At the Buddhist center, roll away from the shrine. If you're at home, roll to your left. There's debates about whether you should roll to your left or your right first. Huh? We could argue both cases. And then rolling to your right when you're ready. Or the other side, or not necessarily right, but towards the shrine if you're in the studio. And slowly let yourself come round again with a bit of light and color. And when you're ready to come up, bring yourself up nice and easy from the side. Here comes that voice, I think. <laughs> 